But the question is always, how do we get people into our funnels, right? That's building the funnel is kind of the easy part. It's getting the attention and getting them into it. That's mm -hmm. the difficult part. And so I've really been um, thinking about it and kind of seeking out best practice. And, you know, I know you can just run ads and spend a ton of money, but really the, the, the real question I'm trying to answer is how do you get exposure on a small budget? That's the real answer I'm trying to get, right? right. Um, without spending $1,500, $3,000 a month on ads and just through brute force, get hundreds of clicks into your funnel, right? right. That works. But for most people I serve, they're not there yet. We'll get there. But how do we start with like 10, 15, $25 a day and get people into the funnel where we can start to um, kind of nurture an audience on Facebook, right? Or, or Google. And the way it works is when someone hits this page, they get pixeled, right? So this is my little pixel finder. So we have whole square marketing's pixels. So even if they don't take action right away, if we can get them onto this page or then we can start to retarget them and then show them that ad again and again and again. So basically this ad and this funnel will follow them, follow them around the internet, right? How many times have you checked someone out and then all of a sudden you've checked out a page or something, or maybe you bought something and then all of a sudden like you cannot get away from their ads, right? They're literally everywhere, right? Okay, okay, let, let me ask you what what's the what's the objective of the campaign that you guys are running? Are you going for lead gen? Or are you going for conversion? Yeah, it's it's conversion ad. Just get them to download. You you might want to try lead gen. It might be cheaper. Um, and then also with the the pixel, I was just in a in a meeting uh, in a seminar that might, like hopefully by like second quarter going into twenty twenty three. Facebook is trying to get rid of the pixel there. It's it's because of all the changes what's going on with Apple and and all that going back and forth between Android and iOS. They're trying to get rid of the pixel. So they're actually trying to go to more of an API. Um, uh, and it's called a it's called UTM. UTM, um, yeah. Yeah. Go to more of a UTM. So that way you're getting better metrics uh, on your on your ads. So I was actually thinking. Um, gosh, I don't even know how to say this. The ads that you're running, Caleb, are those the ads that I wrote? Yeah. Okay. Um, I, th and they're not getting any clicks. I don't know. They're getting clicks. Um, <clears throat> let me land this plane and then maybe this will answer some questions you guys have. Okay. All right. I know everyone's excited to chime in and I appreciate that, but, but that's really not the purpose of this is not to like complain that the ad wasn't working. What I'm trying to say is how do you get started with a low budget, right? Okay. Um, and so uh, I I found this podcast. Um, it's called the, uh, what is it called? Next Level Facebook Ads Podcast. And so I linked it, linked out to it here. Okay, so let me drop this in the chat too. All right, so this is a little content creation tool that I made. Some time ago, I call it the 10 by 10 content creation matrix. Nice. And basically the idea is you identify 10, um, you identify 10 different hooks or things that you can talk to people about, right? So um, this is mine. I filled out a, a while ago. So I have a concept called the MVM flywheel. Um, I, I learned and I teach simple copywriting, um, a three point system, define, agitate, solve. Um, I simplified Russell's perfect webinar, simple, perfect webinar. I can teach how to do a VSL. Basically, you just identify 10 different topics, kind of a broad topic, and then it's broken down into 10 different elements that you can teach, right? And since um, the world has the attention of a medicated goldfish, you know, <laughs> I, you know a goldfish on Ritalin, then um, you only have a short amount of time to teach and entertain people, right? And so instead of trying to do this long form content piece, which works on YouTube, right? But it takes it takes a lot of work to make a really, uh, really good, you know, long form YouTube video, right? So you could, you could teach the whole thing in a long form YouTube video. You could teach, you could just go over a part of it for a TikTok, right? You could do three parts of it for, on IGTV ad. 
So the idea is you identify the, the topic, right? And then you kind of break down, you break that topic down um, into these 10 different elements. And if you and if you make each box its own piece of content, like a TikTok or a real style piece of content, right? You have a hundred pieces of unique content. Does that make sense? Derived yeah. from 10 topics, right? So overview, like what's the high level overview? What's the backstory? Why do you care about it? Well, you know, what's what's the strategy? One, two, three, four. You know, here's how you can get better conversions with your funnels. You know, one, two, three, four. Follow me for more tips, right? You know, tactic number one. Here's how you can, you know, so like you're just kind of breaking it down. Um, avoid this when you're building your landing page funnels, you know. Do this when you're building your landing page <laughs> funnels, right? Do that, you know. Nice. And so let me tell you a story of a client I had. I made a landing page for him. Chuck, let me tell you about Chuck and the conversion monster. Call to action, join the funnel for the mastermind. I'll teach you how to tie it all together. All right. So it's you can use it for organic, but the 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 frame of reference I want you to look at it from today is Facebook ads. So if you go to this, um, so you're on there. So um your what's the word? Your homework this week is to listen to this podcast episode. And it is um, how how did I spend 25 per day on Facebook ads? So basically, the idea is that you create um, $20 per day is going towards awareness, right? So, be, you know, if they dump the pixel and this changes in a few months, you know, Ray will let you uh, instruct us on that. But the idea is um, instead of running a conversion campaign or basically the brute force trying to get people as, you know, as many people as you can into your, your funnels, you, you focused a, a $20 per day of that budget, or let's just say two thirds, right? A major, or another way to put it, a majority of the budget is going towards this, a value bomb ad that is simp that the goal is just get people to watch the ad, get people to interact with it. So it could be video views. It could be a Facebook message. It could be just traffic, right? You're just trying to get people to look at the ad and interact with it. And basically the idea is you want to identify, those are generally cheaper traffic objectives. So with the traffic ad, the Facebook is not looking for quality. It's not like trying to parse through the database and see you know, who might be best to actually take action on this ad. It's just showing your ad to as many people as possible, right? Um, correct me, my Facebook ninjas, if I'm wrong, but basically Facebook is just showing your ad to as many people as possible. Or if it's a messaging ad, it's just trying to just say, hey, send me a message, right? So it's a pretty cheap traffic objective. So you can get a lot of impressions on content um, for cheap, right? And the people that interact with it, the people that like or share, or they watch more than 25% of the video, or you can kind of indicate how much, uh, you know, what the parameters are. Basically what Facebook now, what you can determine is, hey, this person is interested in this type of content, right? And when people are interested in that type of content, they'll probably interest, be interested in whatever solution it is you're ultimately selling, okay? And then you take $5 a day and you retarget the people who have interacted with your ad on any level or been to your landing page, and then you show them your call to action. Does that make sense, right? So I was walking my dog last night and I, and I, I, I kind of had this epiphany and this may sound silly, but I have, I've wanted an RV for a long time, okay? Who doesn't, right? America, you know, the great American road trip. It's like this golden dream. Load up the whole family in the RV and you drive around the country, right? Yeah, and you visit all, you know, visit Mount, Mount Rushmore and the Grand Canyon. And like, it's just a thing, right? And, but they're expensive, right? And I've realized that I have watched a lot of content on just RVs, right? Van life, uh, uh, outfitting buses, stuff like that, right? And I'm walking my dog and I see, and I, I just listened to this podcast episode and I was kind of uh, dwelling on it. And I walked by this giant RV parked on the side of the road. And I thought to myself, who watches videos on RVs? People and that live I, in an RV park. 
No, no, I meant want to. <laughs> it's the people, people who are going to buy RVs, right? right? And it was kind of like this simple epiphany, but it's like people that watch this content and interact with it are probably interested in the solution you're selling, right? And if you're running ads or and you're running traffic to your funnels, and all of us need to be doing this eventually, right? The idea here is make some valuable content and listen to that podcast episode because he kind of breaks it down. Basically, just hold nothing back. Deliver a ton of value, right? And if you, um, you know, like Chuck, he, te- he, he helps people with their SEO. So that could simply be a short tutorial video, okay? If you're a brick and mortar like Jason and you want to people to come into your chiropractic office, you know, give them uh, tips for posture, right? If you're a local restaurant, it could be something like where you're showing them how to uh, make your, it could be like a little mini cooking show, right? So people interested in your con, like no matter what you do, you can make content around it. And the people who are looking for that solution or considering buying in the next few months, there's a good chance that they'll be actually interested in your organic content, okay? And then we retarget them. So Anyway, listen to the podcast episode. If you need some ideas on like, okay, well, what can I talk about in these content pieces, right? Well, use this 10 by 10 content creation matrix where you can identify um, just, you know, pain points, desires your clients have, interests, a hook, something that'll get their attention, something that they find funny, you know, if it's the unicorn thing, you know, play it up, right? And just identify it and then break it down. Like, okay, um, even what you told us today, Sandra, like what's the backstory of the unicorn, right? Why is that? Like, I think that story, it, it does attract people to yourself. So like communicate that. Right. Um, and let me share one more thing before we kind of, um, go into discussion. Um, so I was trying to think through, okay, well, what is a value bomb ad that I've actually seen out there in the marketplace that would be a good example. So th- there's this guy, Maxwell Finn, um, he teaches Facebook ads and now he um, now he teaches TikTok ads, right? So this is him. So I looked up some of his ads and uh, I would call this a uh, a value bomb ad, right? So I'm gonna I'm going to <clears throat> sorry, I gotta share it with my sound. There you go. Okay. There you go. All right. What's the biggest lesson I've learned after spending $3.1 million on ads this year? It's all about the opening hook. A good opening hook will stop the scroll, grab attention, and open the curiosity loop. Here's 10 opening hook ideas that'll increase your views and your profits. <laughs> If you want 300 more hook ideas, just like those that'll increase your views and your ads profitability, click below. I'll send them to you right now. Here's 10. Okay. It's a short ad, but it's valuable, right? And you can actually like pause it like, oh, like there's actually useful content in there, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're writing ads and you want to do it better, like you can literally use content from this ad uh, and apply it. Now, obviously he has more, he sell, he sells a $7 thing. And I'm sure before you know it, you're in his high ticket funnel and people are calling you and I'm sure it's just this slippery slide of pain where you're going to spend <laughs> a lot of money, but the vet, the ad is valuable, right? So he teaches uh, hooks and Facebook and TikTok ads, and he's taken just a chunk of that and he's turned it into a valuable ad. All right. See how this works. So we can run a simple ad objective for traffic or, hey, if you have a question, shoot me a Facebook message. So you can have kind of the same uh, content, but you could have a different call to action. Download my freebie, or if you have a question about this, send me a Facebook message. All right, so you can do this with a low budget amount, get a lot of exposure, and then the people that interact with it, you just retarget them, right? 